Let us join together in a responsive call to worship. God of all creation, the heavens are yours, they are not ours. The earth does not belong to us, nor to any living thing. Our lives are not our own, they are yours. And yet we wish to take over the vineyard of life and have it for ourselves. Calm our rebellious hearts. Bring us once again under your command. And now, as we worship in the very presence of God, let us sing to the God of wonders. I will sing the verses and invite you to join me on the chorus or whatever parts of the song you know, as we sing together, God of wonders. Whether you are barking it or singing it.
Uh, if you're standing, you're welcome to be seated. And I want to welcome everyone to worship. I'm Pastor Jeremy, and I'm glad to be worshiping with you as we experience together God's presence. God is here, and God brought you here to meet God in whatever way you need today. A great big welcome to all of you worshiping in person in the park and all of you worshiping later online. I would especially like to welcome anyone who is visiting with us, whether in person or online. You are very welcome here, and we hope this will be a meaningful worship experience for you. Today, we begin our generosity series called Wrestling with God. After calling on God's power through the Holy Spirit in prayer, now we wrestle with the possibilities God has laid out for us. As we continue to prepare for our MCCI Express Day, let's take some time to wrestle with God for how our future might look and how we might be generous in making it happen. Today's service is called The Tail Wagging the Dog? Question mark. As we begin our month of wrestling with God, do we try to control things that we have no control over? If so, how can we begin to better walk our own talk? We'll explore what this means as we care for creation and bless pets as well as in our lives of generosity. Now, we are a people of prayer, and we open ourselves to God in prayer as we pray for renewal, for breakthroughs. For the God who can do more than we can ask or imagine to break through with new possibilities in our lives and church and community. God loves our prayer. We have people bringing friends to church and visiting almost every Sunday these days. And I pray that this breakthrough will continue and that through it, people will have an experience of God that makes a real difference in their lives. Take a card if you haven't already and pray the breakthrough prayer daily, perhaps at 7.15 a.m. p.m. or both, 715 for our area code, or any time that works for you. Set an alarm, pray it wherever you are. It's also easy to memorize. Let's now pray together for the new thing that God will do. God of amazing things, spring forth with new possibilities for our lives and our church that will bubble over into our community. Amen. Now, for a children's time in which everybody gets to participate, uh, we're going to sing All God's Critters Got a Place in the Choir. I invite you to sing on the chorus along with me, and there are some sound effects that I will need your help with. Here's how the chorus goes. All God's creators got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands or pause or anything they got now. All right, try that with me. Ready? All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands or pause or anything they got now. Good, here's the first verse. Listen to the pass, it's the one on the bottom where the bullfrog croaks and the hippopotamus moans and groans with the big to do. The old cow just goes moo. Here, let me hear your best moo. There you go. The dog and the cat pick up the middle while the honeybee hums and the cricket fiddles, the donkey brays and the pony neighs and the old coyote howls. Oh! All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands for pause or anything they got now. Listen to the top where the little birds sing All the melody with the high note ringing The hoot owl hollers over everything And the jaybird disagrees What do you think that sounds like? There we go Singing in the nighttime, singing in the day A little duck quacks and he's on his way The possum ain't got much to say And the porcupine talks to himself Ouch! 
All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. It's a simple song of living sung everywhere by the ox and the fox and the grizzly bear, grumpy alligator and the hawks above, sly raccoon and the turtle dove. Everybody, all God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. Well done. The dogs are like really behaving themselves all of a sudden. Knock on some wood quick. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's now invite Ruth for our scripture reading. Good morning. Before we have the scripture reading from Psalm 19, I have two notes that I want to share about it. First, the Psalms are considered to be Hebrew poetry. And one of the characteristics of Hebrew poetry is parallelism. And in this case, synonymous parallelism. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that the second line of a verse or phrase reinforces the first line using just a little bit of different wording. So you'll hear that as we uh, share the latter part of the psalm in particular. And the second thing I'd like to say is the beginning portion of this psalm describes creation speaking to us without words. Creation speaking to us without words, like what we use. So now hear a reading of Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament, the sky, proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet, their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man, runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its feet. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can detect their own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent, the dis respectful. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let's now sing together, My Gratitude Now Accept, O God.
I remember a political satire movie from 1997 called Wag the Dog. Anybody remember that movie? Yeah, a couple of you. Uh, in it, the president is accused of a scandal less than two weeks before the next election, and a spin doctor and Hollywood producer are brought in to create a fictional war in Albania to distract voters. Ironically, the movie came out a month before the Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky scandal and the subsequent bombing of the Al Shifa pharmaceutical factory in Sudan, which of course prompted comparisons between the movie and reality. The tale wagging the dog is a phrase coined much earlier, however. It comes from a 1970s newspaper article about political conventions. Then, as now, it is a phrase about a backward situation in which the smaller tail is controlling the bigger dog. The smaller, seemingly unimportant entity controls a bigger, more important one. And today we think of it in terms of our relationship with God. How often do we, the smaller tail, try to control the bigger dog, i.e. God? Think about our reading from Psalm 19. It is full of imagery of God's glory. It begins, the heavens are telling the glory of God. I like to imagine the heavens singing in glorious voice about God's wonderfulness. The first half of the psalm continues this theme, embellishing on God's creativity. And then verse 7 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. And when it says law, I, I think less about a bunch of rules and more about the law of gravity. God's love and grace are just there, part of the fabric of the universe. They are perfect, reviving the soul. It even talks about how God's ways are more to be desired than gold, sweeter than honey, enduring forever. Psalm 19 wonderfully sets up the glory of God, grounding all being. And then it twists a bit at the end. After all that wonderfulness, it says, but who can detect one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. The psalmist is saying, in effect, that sometimes we find ourselves trying to wag the dog. Sometimes we can't see how to be in right relationship with God. Sometimes we try to control things that we can't control. Sometimes, even if we wouldn't put it this way, we try to be God. We try to outsmart God. We try to downplay our role in the sin of the world. We try to shift responsibility to others. We try to push so hard in one direction that we lose sight of the big picture. But who can detect one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. The good news is that I think sometimes we can detect our own errors, but it requires clear understanding of our relationship with God and with other people. Let God be God, and let us be God's creatures, understanding the difference and living humbly because of it. When we had just gotten our Cairn Terrier Snowden, this guy back here who's so anxious, a few years ago, he was still just a year old, and he loved to chew on everything. <laughs> Books, shoes, his own leash, dog toys, only sometimes. The biggest prize was something with a bit of leather in it, a bit of chew. So Snowden ruined two of my wife's pairs of shoes, they were unsalvageable. I still have a couple marks on some of my shoes from his puppydom. 
We also liked to make an Episcopal Church joke using a phrase from the Book of Common Prayer and say that he read, marked, and inwardly digested a couple church books, which we had at home because it was the pandemic. But consider, should we really blame him for this? Or should we just have put the things away if we didn't want them chewed? And what's important here in the end, right? Right relationship with God and God's creation. Don't let the tail wag the dog. Don't try to be God. Don't blame God's creation. Think about your role and live humbly in it as one of God's creatures. This is so important as we begin our month of wrestling with God. Because if we're going to begin wrestling with God about who we are to be, how to live and give and love, we have to be in right relationship. So often, people don't wrestle with God. They avoid the wrestling altogether. They put themselves above God and become okay with how things are. And often because of it, become fearful of change. This is as true in our care of creation as it is in our lives of generosity. If we think of ourselves as more important than God, even if we wouldn't admit it, we don't wrestle with how to actually make a difference in our lives and in the world. We have a fixed mindset to bring back a phrase from so long ago in our MCCI training. But when we begin to wrestle with God, we begin a process of saying, God, what do you want from me here, now? How do you want me to care for your creation? How do you want me to make a difference in the world? How do you want me to use my resources? How do you want me to grow in generosity? How do you want me to love my neighbor? How do you want me to act toward people who are on the margins or oppressed? God, what do you want from me here and now? Let me wrestle with you and see if I'm living, giving, and loving as you dream that I could be. The psalm finishes with a great verse about how we can learn to better walk our own talk. How we can get out of the tail wagging the dog situation that we sometimes find ourselves in with God. How we can wrestle with God's priorities in our living, giving, and loving. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Repeat that after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This phrase puts us in right relationship with God where we are creature to God's creator, where we are growing into God's potential for us, where we are seeking God's feedback so that we don't wag the dog, where we are wrestling with God about what it looks like to give generously of our lives and resources. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. And now with the beautiful sun starting to shine and peek through, let's invite our choir forward to sing All Nature Sings.
Thank you, choir. It is the priestly work of all God's people to give thanks for God's blessings, to ask for and lend assistance to all in need, and to stretch our hands to heal and cherish the creatures of God. This is our work of blessing. Recognizing God's love for these creatures, I invite you to bring forward the animals entrusted to your care one by one, and to join me in the laying on of hands in prayer. So there is no order to this in any way, and do whatever you need to do to yep, keep your dog uh, happy, right? <laughs> um, and come on up. Creature, friend, and companion. May God, your creator and preserver, bless, defend, heal, and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Okay. Fellow creatures, friends, companions. May God, your creator and preserver, bless, defend, heal, and keep you this day and always. Amen. 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 Good job, Dougie. Hi, you two. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Rocky. Rocky. Hi, Rocky. How are you? Fellow creature, friend, and companion, may God, your creator and preserver, bless, defend, heal, and keep you this day and always. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Fellow creature, friend, and companion, may God, your creator and preserver, bless, defend, <laughs> heal, and keep you this day and always. Amen. Fellow creatures, friends, and companions, <laughs> may God, your creator, and preserver, bless, defend, keep, and heal you this day and always. creature, friend, and companion, may God, your creator and preserver, bless, defend, heal, and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen. There you go. <laughs> Amen. Are there any others? I won't forget snow. Then. <laughs> yep. And now some of you might be worshiping at home or have animals that you couldn't bring or would otherwise like to bless. And I invite you to repeat after me as a way to bless each of these animals in our lives. Fellow creatures, friends and companions. Oh, okay, you have the words in front of you, don't you? Okay, then let's do this instead. Look in your bulletin. <laughs> and we'll say it all together, ready? Fellow creatures, friends, and companions, may God, your creator and preserver, bless, defend, heal, and keep you this day and always. Amen. 
We now come to a time of offering, not for passing a plate, but for recognizing and giving thanks for God's gifts in our lives and how we have been responding. And today, and as I have been these past couple weeks, and will continue to do for some coming Sundays, I'd like to do some thanksgiving for people serving in our church. And they don't know this is coming, but I want to thank Heidi and Ty for making all of our AV work. Um, without them, at, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And bark. You're the only ones who are going to get a bark. That's pretty cool. Um, without them, at church, we wouldn't be live streaming, having working microphones, or a screen on which to follow worship, or videos that play at the right time. And here, I would have probably walked out of the view of the camera, and it would have looked funny online. So they do it all while trying to make sure that you are having a worshipful experience as well. Uh, so, thank you. I encourage your own response to God's grace through your offerings of time, talent, and money. Offerings of money to continue impacting lives here and around the world can be given in the offering basket, which is over there as you leave worship, uh, online at newrichmondwiumc.org, or through the, well, is there a QR code in your bulletin? If there is, you can use it. Uh, if not, there, the QR code is over on the table over here. Let us now pray together for all God's gifts in our lives. God of grace, bless our gifts so they may bless others with your love. Amen. And now let us continue in prayer. If you have personal prayer concerns, I invite you to share them directly with me or with Christy for the prayer list and the weekly email so the church community can be in prayer for you. And I invite us to take a few deep breaths before we pray and call to mind people and situations about which you would like to pray during a time of silence. We pray for people who have died and now live with God and in our hearts and minds. We pray for helpers like doctors, nurses, clinic and hospital staff, first responders and people serving in harm's way. For mental health professionals and those struggling with mental health issues. For workers in our complicated and changing world of employment and those without jobs or with circumstances changing toward hardship. For people working with elders in our community. People working for systemic change toward justice and peace. Leaders in our nation and world. People thrown into war in Ukraine people suffering due to natural disasters and due to mass shootings. We pray for schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, for scientists, journalists, for parents and their children. We also pray for those in particular need of prayer from our church community. We pray for Steve, for Karen, for Marilyn, for Sharon, for Todd, for Jenny, for Jerry, for Richard, for Tom, for Chaney, for Rosemary, for Jody and family, including Jenea, for Donna, for Dawn, for Manya, for Kelly, for Don, for May and Jamie, for Marlene, for Joe, for Lori, for Gladys, and for Don. As we breathe, pray for these people. And I will close with a prayer meditation by Steve Garnis Holmes. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Let us pray.
God, I do not ask for great faith. Give me the smallest faith. Give me a mustard seed of trust. Let creep into my heart the tiniest ant of compassion. May microbes of gratitude do their work in me. Let the smallest atom of your joy thrum in me. Murmur only your briefest syllable to me. Let me be the faintest star in your beautiful night. A single note in your earthly chorus. Just a hint of you is all I need. For merely a cell of you is all I am. By your infinite grace, that is enough. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for letting me worship with you. Next week, I look forward to worshiping with you as well for our continuation of the Wrestling with God series with a worship service called Indescribable Gift. Thanks be to God for God's indescribable gift. The Apostle Paul ends 2 Corinthians chapter 9 with a phrase that invites us to consider how to wrestle with generosity toward a God who gives all. Not grudgingly or under compulsion, as Paul writes, but what does it mean to wrestle with God about what kind of generosity fits God's indescribable gift? Following worship today, we have a potluck, and the weather is warming up, and the sun is coming out, so stick around, even if you didn't bring any food. God has a way making sure that all people are fed, right? You are all welcome, and I would like to say a meal blessing with you now, so that after everything's all set up, we can all simply go ahead and eat. It's a very simple meal blessing that I learned from a colleague, so it goes like this, and then we can all say it together. Thank you, God, for enough and some to share. Amen. Isn't that easy? Ready? Here we go. Thank you, God, for enough and some to share. Amen. All right. If you would like to make an announcement, I invite you to come on up to the microphone here. And as people are coming up, I want to let you know we have scheduled our MCCI Express Day, which is a day when a team of leaders from MCCI, including Sue Nelson Kibbe herself, will be coming to our church and listening to us for a day of spiritual discernment. It's Monday, October 30th, and this is a major chance for you to make a difference in the life of the church. Uh, there's a big evening event. We're going to have a meal before it, and then the MCCI team will listen to you through their process of spiritual discernment. Some leaders may meet with the MCCI team during the day. Look for an invite from me. And then we'll have one service that following Sunday, November 5th at 9 o'clock for the reading of their report and the offering of prescriptions. They'll offer us some prescriptions on how we can continue in the ministry that we're already doing, but then also take it up a notch and jumpstart a new life cycle. Um, so, Sign up at the church. This is important. Please sign up at the church or through the Sign Up Genius uh, link that you got in your weekly email. Um, we have 12 people signed up, at least physically in the church right now. So this is a very important event about the future of the church. Please add your name and uh, pray about coming on, on Monday, October 30th. 6 o'clock for the meal, 6.30 for the event. Anybody, Mark?
Well, it happens to be Pastor Appreciation Month, and uh, we not only greatly appreciate our pastor, why don't you come up here and join me if you wouldn't. My dog. Yeah. <laughs> not only do we greatly appreciate our pastor, but he has led us and is in the middle of leading us through a very difficult transition for which we're grateful. Um, for that, Jeremy, we have a gift for you, which represents our appreciation. You, uh, we are blessed by your leadership. We are blessed by your dedication and we're blessed by your kindness. And uh, you, hopefully when you use this tablet, you remember that you are meaningful to all of us and that we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, that's very kind of you. I appreciate you all as well, so thank you for being here and, and uh, making a difference in this church and in the world. Please continue to check your email for updates from Christy, or if you're tuning in for the first time, check us out on Facebook or our website again, that's newrichmondwiumc.org. Let's now close together by singing How Great Thou Art. the benediction we seem to have missed someone who was going to give an announcement um, so we're going to have that announcement while I prepare for our closing uh, benediction response which is a new song to all of you and it is a tune I wrote with the lyrics being our breakthrough prayer um, so this will become a fun thing to sing together and I invite us to now a share and a blessing. Uh, hear Ruth's announcement as I get ready to lead us in the, this new song. 
And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look on you with favor and give you peace. Be well. Amen. Our congregation is entering a very active period of time. Deb Geving has already spoken about the Beef Burger Lunch, which is coming up October 18th, with sign-ups in the gathering space. We also have our MCCI Express Day on October 30th in the evening, in which our entire congregation is invited to participate in a conversation about the future possibilities we have as a congregation. Also, with signups in the gathering space. On November 10 and 11, our all church room sale will take place and we invite you to gather any items you no longer need or want and bring them to the church beginning the Sunday before the sale. There will also be signups for support staff for this event. All of these events are opportunities to engage in the ministries of our church all of these events flourish with your participation. Let's keep the momentum going as we move forward into the possibilities God is opening up to us. And one more note, for those of you who are looking for an evening Bible study opportunity, and I know we've had requests for that, we will begin a four week Advent study beginning October 26th that's the last Thursday of this month, starting at 6.30 p.m. at the Deerfield. And that study will be completed a week before Thanksgiving. So just let me know after the service. If you're interested, I actually brought the study book that we're gonna be using. So if you wanna take a gander at that, you're welcome to as well. Thank you. All right, this is what I'm calling the Breakthrough Prayer Song. And it goes like this. I'll, we'll sing it once through up here, and then I invite you to listen and then sing along a second time through, okay? God of amazing with new 